Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, July 30th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, we talked before about some of the parasitic exploits trying to take advantage of the CrowdStrike issue. Did he today analyze the Word document that appears to be taking advantage of CrowdStrike? It does deploy the Dalpu Stealer. It's Pretty straightforward Word document, but what actually was a little bit more interesting than the malware it uh, deployed, the malware was relatively straightforward, is the fact that it included a Crammarly ID. If you're not familiar with Crammarly, Crammarly is a Crammar spell checker. It's a web service that you can subscribe to. And sounds reasonable that if you have a document checked by Crammarly, that Crammarly will add artifacts, basically identifying the document that you had spell checked. This, of course, could lead to identifying the actual author of the document. The ID is long, looks random, so it probably just identifies the document, not necessarily the author themselves. But if anybody has any ideas or knows how to interpret that document ID, let us know. Now, in this particular case, actually, it may not have been necessary to actually run Crammly on a document. It's just a verbatim copy of a legitimate uh, CrowdStrike document that the author didn't really make any changes to other than embed the visual basic code. And Salt published a blog post outlining an interesting cross-site scripting vulnerability in Hotjar. Hotjar is a company that essentially aids websites to track users across their website, basically determine user behavior. And as part of this, collects quite a bit of sensitive data down to screenshots as you're browsing the website. Note that there is Nothing really sort of exploitation involved in this. This is code that's deliberately deployed by these websites. But in order to make it work, Hotjar actually has to do authentication, and this uses OAuth. OAuth, of course, great uh, protocol, great standard, but has a lot of sort of little pitfalls in it. And one of them is if your pages are susceptible to cross-site scripting that could be used by an attacker to inject JavaScript that will then collect some of the OAuth authentication material, in particular the authentication code. The problem here was a cross-site scripting vulnerability in the redirect URL. It's a more tricky cross-site scripting vulnerability, but nothing really super fancy. And with that, JavaScript can then be injected that will steal the authorization code after the user successfully logged into Hotjar. And with that, of course, an attacker could have access to some of the data that Hotjar collects about the user or make adjustments to the collection behavior. So I'll publish a little page that you can use to test your own website if it's susceptible to some of these OAuth issues. So go ahead, uh, give it a try. Probably better for you to test it than for an attacker to test it first. And Proofpoint operates a service that allows you to filter spam and spoofed emails, but also provide the necessary headers like DKIM and also SPF, uh, DMARC, and all uh, those fancy records you need these days for any outbound email. However, due to some lax configurations, it was possible for anybody to spoof email as coming from any Proofpoint customer. The problem was in part related how Proofpoint works. Users usually don't connect directly to Proofpoint in order to send email, but they connect to their preferred mail service, which often is, for example, Outlook 365. So if you are a company using Proofpoint, you had a simple switch that you could flip, where you basically say, okay, trust email coming from Outlook 365 as being legitimately sent by us because, of course, Outlook 365 also does its checks, does authenticate the users before they're sending email. The problem with that was that attackers were able to inject email into this relay bucket chain at points where 
Proofpoint already trusted the email, but uh, the sender was actually not uh, verified. Then Proofpoint did add its DKIM headers, digitally verify the email coming from the correct sender for that domain. And with that, of course, it would be possible to essentially perfectly spoof an affected domain. Proofpoint made the source selection no more granular, so that way it's possible to not just trust all of Outlook 365, but only the parts that you are actually using, uh, which does mitigate this problem. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.